Hello and welcome to CS230. This is lecture four, lesson one, and I'm going to continue the theme for this particular week on presenting content with cascading style sheets. So what I'm going to try and do over the next few lessons, and including this one, is to go into a little bit more depth with some of the selectors that we saw in the Thursday lecture. So, um, and really I'm going to be looking at aspects of styling, and layout you know they're two of the most important aspects really that we, we deal with and um, there will be more i suppose more styling than layout for these particular lessons but we'll come to the layout a little bit more and how we might manipulate that later when we when we start working with javascript so there are lots of references everywhere i particularly like some of these these ones here um, and you know you can um, have a look yourself and see what you think so there's the Beginner's Tutorial here, a guide to pseudo classes and pseudo elements from Smashing Magazine. It's a great one, I like this. Um, lots of tips and tricks. Uh, there's a nice one here on learning CSS layout. We'll come back to that a little bit later. And again, of course, the CSS tricks itself. So I was reading, um, I was reading an article um, in the learn layout, learncsslayout.com website and saw something really nice, okay. Um, and this is the website here. And we can um, have a look at some of the examples in, in here. And there's some nice, nice styling features around the divs. And I thought, this is really nice. And they're automatic. And they scroll, you know, they scroll with, uh, with uh, the responsive and all this kind of thing. So um, anyway, I thought it would be good to try to look at this. So I've copied. This is what it looks like. And so I thought it might be nice to show how we might do this with um, CSS. Um, and in particular, I'd like to look at using the, the pseudo elements. So they have a nice way of, you know, they just, you know, they obviously have a wrapper around the piece of text and then they add in these extra elements around the top and around the bottom. And then they have something around the whole content. Um, you can see the edges around here, the borders as well. The upper border is a bit thicker than the, the left border, but that's okay. So anyway. I wanted to know how we do this. So, I mean, you could look at the developer tools and tools and, and, and inspect the element, but there'd be no fun in that whatsoever. So I thought, let's start playing. So today, um, and today I'm actually using um, Adam, which I'd recommend for Markdown for keeping notes, and you could try it yourself. Um, it's really nice. Um, anyway, let's go to our editor, which I'm using Visual Studio Code. And so I started off at first, and um, so I said I wanted to create an element that had something in the top left or bottom right. So I could put something in the top left, like, like we see here, or the bottom right, like we see here, and then, or if I wanted, I could put something in these corners here. You know, so let's see about how we would position content within corners in a div. So I'm looking at just uh, playing with putting something in the corners. I'm creating this outer container, and then I'm creating a class, four divs inside it, one, two, three, four, and then, um, I'm going to absolutely position these. So the outer container, it's relative to where I am. It has a fixed width and height. And I've given it a nice green border like the example across here. Um, then I'm defining, um, so, and you know, I'm, I'm specifically giving an ID to this container here. So any, any div that has this particular container ID will, will have this feature. Um, and for any divs inside of this, well, I'm interested in four in particular, and I'm interested in absolutely positioning the, um, the div uh, with width 60 pixels, height 20 pixels, and having a background with black. So we can have a look, and then I'm defining what the top is. And, you know, you can see that this top here specifies how far an absolutely positioned box's margin edge is offset below the top edge. So, you know, or above or below. So, you know, we set all of these to zeros. So we, in other words, we stick them into the corner. So let's have a look at this. And um, again, I'm using Vivaldi today. Um, and here it is, it looks nice. You know, we can reload it, it's fine. And I can, I can create this div here at the bottom. And I can say, Class, oh sorry, it needs to be inside. Class equals right, and I'm that's a mess. Let's fix this. <laughs> okay, so um, it's missing here, and we just need to close this tag. So now I have created my my uh, top left and bottom right. I'm going to run this. Be a good idea to save this, then run it, 
What we get? Ooh, bottom right. Oh, that's because I called it bottom. Bottom right. Save. So it's position the content it wasn't too difficult really so it's nice to be able to have a look at this so when um, okay so let's enhance it a little bit and let's look at the second one so in this particular one i want to put something in text at the top corner just see how that works so i am um, again i just had a little bit more information around the styling here okay and that was really nice really nice okay so let's go to the second one you know, and I'm here looking at putting padding around these things, having more text. Um, and you can see we can mess with the padding around the containers to, to make them a little bit different. Let's make the padding 10 here, for example. And we can reload. Oh, one second. Not much happening here. Okay, so let's um Let's leave it there. So I, again, I'm, I'm doing something similar here with top right and left right, and I'm filling the text. Um, and I'm, I'm manually changing the style. I'm overriding the style here. So that's why when I changed the style in the container up here, it didn't make any difference. So um, if I change the padding here um, to 30, and I can reload this, and you can see it affects this. So it's just more playing with something. So we want to get a bit closer, though, to having what they had, which is something like this. And that's really nice. So let's see if we can figure out how to make that particular piece happen. So I've got this something happening, some text in the top left corner, and it's responsive, you know, depending on the size of the, the, the element, then we can see that, um, or the size of the wrapper here, you can see that the wrapper um, tells me uh, that I'm uh, having a width 50%. So it's fine if I make this 60%. Uh, save this, reload this document. And you'll see it's nice, so it always get this title at the top. And the way I've done this is I just I've defined the CSS wrapper, um, where I've got a label here called title, and you can put a label inside any div, and I'm just telling it where to display that title. If I we're using the class wrapper, so let's go up to the wrapper. Okay, the body text is set here, and it tells me that I've got a a 14 pixel font on a 20 pixel line height, I don't really like that. Let's make that a little bit bigger. Let's make it 24 and we can reload here and see we've got a little bit more space. Feel a little bit heading up here. We can make it 30 actually. So it's a bit more space in between, okay. Um, but that's just applies to the whole body section. Okay, so the wrapper, I'm doing a wrapper that for div elements, I'm telling it's position is going to be relative, it has a nice green border, the margin is um, at the top is 20 pixels, okay, and the padding is 20, 10, 10. Okay, so it's it's not too bad. And that tells me a little bit about the margin for all of this here. Okay, now we're saying what happens to a label that's inside a div that's wrapped, has white and um, color, has a line height 20 pixels, has some padding, its position is absolute like we had previously where it sits up in the top corner here and telling it that that position is zero and two pixels um, uh, to the left. Okay, we can move it um, and we can make the top be 10. Reload this and you've pushed it down a little bit, but we want it to be here. And it looks nice. Okay, and if we can move it across if we wanted, we can make it. Um, 20 here, save, and we've pushed them across, but I kind of like it right in the corner because we want it to look like the example we had previously. Okay, so it's not too bad. Okay, so how, so um, that is one way to do it. Of course, we now have something at the top left, but we don't have anything in the bottom right. And we were manipulating an element really here that exists within the div called label, as we've seen here. And um, so we were just repositioning this. So if we have a second label, then it would just overlap this one. So how do we get something at the bottom right? That means we're gonna to have to have some other content in order to make that happen. So I have, uh, so what I'm trying to do now is I'm basically repeating what I did the last time, 
but this time I'm going to look at pseudo elements okay and then it allows us to be able to manipulate uh, some additional data and have it in the bottom right and the top left and we'll see that in the next lesson thank you for watching